Hi, I'm Hannah Cruz at the Church Musician's Assistant. In this video, I would like to help you edit your audio to get the most out of your recordings for online worship. So stick around, we're going to be using a free program called Audacity, and we will take the recordings that we made with the, uh, with the tools I talked about in a previous bit video on best, uh, best tools to use for audio recording. And we will take that, put it into Audacity, edit it, and I will show you some basic editing tactics to improve your audio. So stick around and let's get to it. Let's pull our desired track into Audacity now. Click File, Import, Audio, and find your track. So I'm gonna choose this one. This is part of a piece called Just As I Am by William Bolcom. Just the first half of it, actually. And I recorded this using my Zoom device that I talked about in a previous video. I'll leave a link to uh, get that on Amazon in the description box below. But um, it's a very useful, small, fairly cheap device and it does well to pick up voice, organ, piano, um, most things really. I put the device about three quarters way back in the sanctuary to get, to get this track. Um, but it does need a little bit of editing in my opinion. Um, just to bring out the best sound quality and to, to fix up the tracks. because there's some dead space while I'm walking and setting everything up. Um, and I actually already know that this is the beginning. You can kind of tell from the waveform, but I'll zoom in just a little bit so that I can get a cleaner cut here. And I'm going to click here and drag all the way back to the beginning, delete that. You can see I left a little bit of space because I want to select some of that space, go to Effect, and click Fade In. That will make sure there's no clipping at the beginning and it will give you a smooth entrance into the piece. For example, so it's a very smooth transition as you can see. Now I do the same thing to the end, just to cut out this extra silence. Uh, by the way, I was so I was selecting that and then I clicked delete on my keyboard. Now I'll select a little bit of that dead time and click fade out. So that does the same thing. All right, cool. So now we've cleaned up the beginning and the end. Next I'm going to select all and on my keyboard, since I'm on a Windows laptop, I'm going to click control all or control A. So that will select all. And uh, we can zoom out if you want to see the whole track. Oop, too much. Okay. So I'm now going to go to Effect, and we're basically just going to be working under this tab for the rest of this video. So I'll go to Effect, and the first thing I want to do is just add a little bit of reverb, because um, in our room there's carpet. It's a nice big sanctuary with a high ceiling, so it does have some reverb, but there are also wooden pews and carpet. 
So I just want to add a smidge of reverb. Now I've already got it set up in a way that I kind of like, and I just fiddled with these um, little buttons, dragging them up or down, and I would listen to the preview to hear what it sounds like every, every time I made a little change. Um, when you press preview, it starts playing a tiny clip from the very beginning. So if you have a lot of silence at the beginning of your track, you probably won't hear anything. So just keep that in mind. If you don't hear any sound, that's probably the, the cause. So you just need to cut out more silence at the beginning and then you'll, then you'll hear it. But um, that's how preview works. Now if you want to just go with the automated um, reverb settings, you can click manage factory presets and uh, let's see we oh we have a lot to choose from here actually let's try church hall see what that's like that sounds really nice it's actually a lot of reverb that might be too much for my personal taste Let's try large room. That's not bad. Slightly less than the last one. Let's go with it for now. All right. Click yes on that. And um, now we have applied our reverb. So next thing to do might be to compress the track. This is not always necessary, and I actually don't think it's necessary for this track, but um, like if you ever listen to classical music on the radio, you will know that sometimes you're having to turn the volume up and you're having to turn it down, and that's because uh, there's a lot of dynamic contrast and the recording has not been compressed. Whereas pop songs on the radio have been compressed a whole lot so that even when the musicians play a little bit quieter or whatever, um, you don't have to fiddle with the volume. So because church members are probably listening to these recordings on um, their laptops or their phones where the audio quality is not that great, uh, you may want to add some compression. So if we were to add compression, I'd just go with the default settings, honestly. I think that works pretty well, uh, but you can fiddle with it if you want to. And what that will do is just kind of even out the loud sections and the soft sections. The next thing I want to try is equalization because I feel like this track almost sounds like it was recorded in a can like it's a little bit muddy and some of the highs and the lows are not quite balanced. So that's what we're going to do next. Go to Effect, Equalization, and this tool is extremely helpful uh, if you want to fiddle with these ranges, the, the lows, the mid-range, the high range, and just fiddle with these uh, amplitude levels. It can be a little overwhelming to look at this graph and all the little buttons, but just start fiddling with them and see what happens. Um, it depends on what instrument you recorded, you know, voice, guitar, organ, piano, something else, as to which, um, which ranges will s stick out and which will be shadowed by another one. So it might be worth Googling, like, um, you know, EQ or best EQing for such and such instrument and you'll probably be able to find some quick tips on which hertz to raise and lower to make that instrument sound better. Uh, but we've got organ right now and a lot of times organ and the bass it's way too rumbly. The lowest low range will pop out and just cause muddiness where it's not necessary. So what I did was lower those ranges from 20 hertz to about 40 hertz 
And when you use this EQ tool on graphic, you can pull the little levers up and down and the graph line will automatically smooth itself out. So that's really helpful. Um, also, the mid-range can cause muddiness, about 200 hertz to 500 hertz, somewhere in there. So I just lowered those a little bit to, um, to decrease the mid-range ever so slightly. And then I also want the recording to pop, to sparkle a little bit more. So I raised the, the higher end here. And that's it. I just decreased the bass, increased the treble, slightly decreased this small uh, range of the middle from 200 hertz to 500 hertz. And let's see what happens. So I'll start playing it here in this soft section and then we'll hear what it sounds like when it goes into the louder section. Apart from it being slightly softer than it was before overall, I feel like the um, the upper range now is sparkling a little bit more. Uh, I could possibly have actually raised that even higher, but I'm going to leave it as is. Um, now, I mean, we could fiddle with this definitely and make it better, but I'm just going to move on for sake of example, I guess because I've shown you what the EQ tool can do. Um, that's the tool where you should probably spend the bulk of your time um, during this process because that's where you'll be able to tweak things uh, minutely and exactly the way that you want. Now I'm going to uh, click Control all to select everything and at this point, there's not a whole lot more that I want to do. Um, I'll just cover some other tools that you might want to use. Amplify, for example, that's just going to let you raise and lower the, the overall volume to however, to however high or low you want. It will tell you when um, when the track is clipping. So you don't really want to raise it above the point where it's going to clip because that will cause um, kind of a staticky, horrible sound. Um, it's definitely not ideal. So avoid clipping at all costs. Another tool, bass and treble. That could be useful if you just want to subtly increase or decrease that bass or treble range. A lot of times I'll use this if I want to boost the bass in something. But watch out for it because sometimes if you boost the bass and it sounds good on your laptop and you go play it on some really good speakers, it will cause a lot of rattling uh, that it's not attractive. So keep that in mind. Okay, what else? The echo tool is sometimes useful. I like reverb overall better than echo um, because echo is like, you know, adding an actual echo, wh whereas reverb mimics more of a large room sound a little bit better. Okay, some of these down here, if you click the little arrow and, and scroll down, I like the high pass filter and the low pass filter. These are really helpful. So the high pass filter will allow all of the, the high range to sound and it will cut off or roll off is the term, the lower uh, decibels and you can select you know where you want it to roll off at basically. Uh, 48 would be the highest possible decibels you could roll off. And uh, that can cut out some of the unattractive rumbling in the bass. The uh, the low pass filter does the same thing except it's going to let your your bass end come through and it's going to cut out some of those uh, screechy 
high ranges that um, that that may be piercing through your mix and those are the tools that I use the most now before we finish this project we need to do one more thing which is normalize normalize is going to make this whole track the standardized volume all the way through it's going to avoid clipping so so if in your editing at this point you have clipping which means the little uh, the peaks and the valleys are pushing above these borders um, then it's going to reduce the overall amplitude of the track so you don't have clipping or if in my case right now if the amplitude is really low and the track is super quiet it's going to increase the volume so see that it increased it by quite a bit and it, normalizing is very important don't forget to do that one With this edit and I want to export it so go to file export audio you can name it and save it however you want and you are now done with the audio editing process hey I hope this tutorial was helpful we just talked about some very basic editing tools that can be used in the free program called audacity and as long as you start with a really good audio recording that you acquired using good recording tools, then uh, you won't have too much trouble achieving a nice mix at the end using Audacity. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give the video a like and make sure to subscribe to our channel because you will be notified when you subscribe. Um, when we put out new videos and we try to do so on a weekly basis we put out content that's helpful for church musicians in their careers so again thank you for watching and i will see you again soon bye for now